Let's talk about topic sentences and supporting details in paragraphs. So previously, we talked a couple of big ideas when it comes to paragraphs. What is the perp what is a paragraph, right? Like, what are the rules for how long should it actually be? Um, what's its purpose? You know, where does it go in the essay? Is it the beginning? Is it in the middle? Is it at the end? What are different strategies you might use? Are you telling a story? Are you giving an example? Whatever. And then we even talked about uh, stems, kind of the structure for how you might present it. Now let's talk about the purpose of individual sentences within a paragraph. Okay, so in some examples, you could probably take a paragraph, sample paragraph, and you could identify a sentence that you could argue is a topic sentence and supporting details. But this requires us to talk about some important concepts. Are you writing explicitly or implicitly? So, explicitly, we, uh, we see it on like, you know, music covers, you know, means swearing or something in it. It's not exactly what the word explicit means. Explicit means you say exactly what you mean. So it's not censored. Uh, implicit, you are hinting at something. You're not saying exactly what you mean. You're, you're leading to it. In different styles of writing, we might use implicit or explicit strategies. Um, say in a mystery, you might be leading to a point without actually saying it. In dialogue, you might have a character who can't quite say how they feel. They're trying to hint at it. That's implicit. In persuasive writing and in academic writing, we don't do that very often because we're trying to make a point and we want to be understood. So we lean towards explicit writing. We say exactly what we mean. Everything needs to be intentional and upfront or else you could be trying to persuade someone of something and they could not get it. Right? Okay, think of think of like a perfume or a cologne commercial, right? There, there are always weird random things happening. And you know, someone is swimming, it's black and white, and there there's big flowy things happening, and all of a sudden it's like Chanel. It's like, oh okay. So it's like a smell, right? Get it. Because like, how do you show smell? I don't know. The way an axe commercial works, for example is they show like guys spraying their bodies and then women are like, whoa. I mean, that's one way you could show smell. But a lot of these cologne commercials, they're all like, ooh, it's, it's, it's all very abstract. And if they didn't say, you know, Chanel or Sauvage or whatever these names for different colognes and perfumes are, like you wouldn't know what they're selling because it's implicit. They're implying, I don't know, something ambiguous instead of just saying what it is. Whereas you take like a McDonald's commercial, they're gonna be at McDonald's. You're gonna see people at McDonald's, they're gonna be happy, they're gonna have McDonald's food, and at the end it's gonna say, McDonald's, I'm loving it. And you're like, oh, McDonald's commercial, right? It's gotta be clear. How are you supposed to sell something if people are like, I have my money, take it, but, but I don't know who to give it to. It's weird, right? So you think of the purpose, okay. Yes, I have a clear point, I'm gonna write explicitly. In those cases, you may have a topic sentence. Topic sentences, they're, uh, they're, they need to clearly state the topic of the paragraph. That's their job. It's often the first sentence, uh, but it can appear other places in a paragraph. In fact, uh, in an introduction, for example, we tend to put the thesis statement, which is kind of the topic of the paragraph, at the end of the sentence because you're building up to an idea. So it's not always the first sentence, but let's say you want to transition from like, okay, I was talking about dogs before, now I'm going to talk about cats. The second you start talking about cats, people know, okay, I'm on a different topic. And it's done the job of a topic sentence, right? It's showing that you've now transitioned to a different topic and, and you get it done. And it doesn't even have to be like, and now I'm going to talk about cats. No, no, we don't necessarily need that sort of transition. You know, you could be talking about like, uh, dogs are great pets, blah, yada, 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 yada. Cats are great pets, blah, yada, yada. Like, it can start with a, it could be a claim. It could be, you know, making a point. That point can support your thesis statement. But the fact that you said something and it was a different idea than the previous paragraph, it it's going to perform the function 
of introducing the topic. And if you write explicitly, you're doing it clearly. And even if it wasn't your intention to write a topic sentence, well, you did. And here's the reality of it. As a writing teacher, I may be telling you, all right, I want you to write a topic sentence. Then I want you to write supporting details. But, like, we do a whole lot of writing and we never think about these things, but they still kind of happen naturally. When you're writing deliberately, intentionally, you're trying to be very clear with your reader, these are good strategies to think about. Is it the end of the world if you don't? No. Because the reader also knows how to read words and you don't have to hold their hand the whole time, they may get it. They may understand that, oh, yeah, okay, now we're talking about this, now we're talking about this. But if there's a problem with your writing and it's not clear what you're talking about, it might be because you never clearly stated the topic you were talking about in that paragraph. And especially if you have filler information that isn't really tightly connected, then again, it's not a very good paragraph because it's really not organized around a central theme or idea. So, yeah. Is it important to think about topic sentences and supporting details? Yeah. Probably when you're writing the outline. When you're drafting, you're probably, as long as it's clear in your head what you're talking about and you're transitioning between ideas really clearly, you're going to do something like this naturally. It's how we communicate. It's inherent, it's built into the system. If we, if you want to nerd out for a little bit, think of it like this. Okay, topic sentence is the subject of the paragraph and supporting details are the predicate. It's just how we present ideas. We identify who or what we're talking about and we say something about it. That's what a subject is, that's what a predicate is. That's what a topic sentence does, that's what supporting details do. It's how we talk, it's how we present information but if we want to be deliberate and intentional and effective, we might want to think about it before we write, even though we'll probably do something like this anyway. Okay, so I'll be using this example throughout this series of videos, but uh, this is an example. This is the opening paragraph of Guardians of the Galaxy and the Fall of the Classic Hero by A. David Lewis. So this is his opening paragraph right there. A beautiful assassin a super strong thug, a star lost child of the 80s, a sentient tree, a gun-toting raccoon. Meet the morally gray protagonist of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the film that raked in 770 million at the box office this past summer and was just released on DVD. Where is the topic sentence? Is it the first sentence? that says a beautiful assassin? Is there any other sentence about a beautiful assassin? Do we learn more about the assassin, the beautifulness? No, but it's a detail, right? Okay, super strong thug, any more about the thug? Star, lost child, sentient tree, raccoon. Meet the morally gray protagonist. Okay, protagonists, now that we get this word, we know, oh, all these different sentence fragments. All these sentence fragments that we had before that each had periods between them are protagonist in what? Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, okay. And the movie made money. So there's two things happening in this paragraph. One, we're introducing characters. Why are we introducing characters? So we could talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Why are we talking about Guardians of the Galaxy? So we can make this point about them making money. Does that make sense? So the core of the paragraph is not the first sentence. This is an example of a hook. Um, I have my issues with it, but it's it's an example, right? So. And this is, this is what I ran into all the time when I was a student, is I was taught a rule and then I would look at what people actually did and I was like, it doesn't follow it. And I never got the explanation why. And the reason is, well, if you stray from conventions, from rules and guidelines, then it might lead to confusion. So you need a good reason 
if you're going to do something unconventional. In this case, you totally get it though, right? Okay, you're describing different people. We already know the title says Guardians of the Galaxy. So if you've seen Guardians, you've watched a commercial, you know what's going on, yeah, you're not going to have trouble figuring this one out, right? Okay, so I also know that this wasn't written this year. This year that I'm recording this, the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, not the first one. So this obviously happened a little while ago. Also, he's talking about DVD. He's not talking about Blu-rays or streaming. So yeah, this was a little while ago. As a reader, I'm able to figure out a lot of different details that aren't being said here. I have context clues. I can figure out what's going on. This is definitely not the point of the essay though. There is no thesis here. This is just introducing something that is going to be talked about. Get your attention, move on. Does that make sense? All right, so this is a little more along the lines of doing something implicitly rather than explicitly. 